So hi, hello and welcome again, Micro Hunter here. Well, these uh, beautiful patterns that you see here on my computer screen, these are crystals of citric acid under polarized light. Yes, directly streamed uh, from my microscope. Look uh, what I can do when I turn one of the polarization filters here. Look, um, yeah, the colors change around quite nicely. And in this video today, I would like uh, to show you how you can also grow those uh, citric acid crystals yourself and how you can put them under the microscope yourself uh, using uh, very, very simple techniques. Um, I would actually say maybe even a little bit too simple and also very cheap. Uh, and uh, the effects are absolutely stunning and beautiful i mean of course uh, i do not have to say that i also printed them out and uh, put them up uh, on my living room wall and you can also make some greeting cards using those beautiful patterns well in any case uh, this these citric acid crystals um, can be made in a variety of different ways and uh, today in this video i'm going to show you the different techniques uh, that you can use well let's start off uh, with the materials first really uh, it's not a lot that you need you need to get yourself polarization filters first now these are a very thin uh, plastic uh, plastic filters uh, that you can cut into pretty much any shape that you want um, possibility number two and that is uh, the one that i'm using right here right now is is actually um i once uh, bought uh, several years ago those uh, glass filters and uh, they basically can be put on uh, to dslr uh, yeah cameras i kind of removed the, the ring here and uh, they also work but i would say probably that's a little bit uh, they're probably a little bit too expensive they do not have any significant advantages either um but uh, essentially um, yeah they're nice and and solid and uh, handling is much easier than the plastic films that you can uh, uh, by and now I'm putting them back again here over the lamp yeah and uh, another possibility is that you use so-called 3d glasses because they also have uh, uh, filters in there and that's not a little trick here some of those 3d glasses actually use uh, so-called circular polarizing filters and uh, they allow you a little bit more variation using the color uh, play so um, you might also want to experiment with those in any case the possibilities are limitless here the second thing um, also quite easily obtainable is citric acid you can pretty much get it in any larger department store citric acid is uh, sold as a powder um, it's used for cooking um, so especially if you want to make certain um, cakes maybe um, fruit cakes especially or jams uh, then you might want to add a little bit of citric acid to make it taste a little bit more sour um, and some people also use it for cleaning purposes um, because the citric acid is also able to remove water stains and calcium carbonate uh, deposits and so on so there are uh, it's a very um, there are many uh, uses for this and therefore it's readily available and of course you need uh, to have microscope slides and then also some kind of a solvent um, i'm going to show you how you can do that with alcohol but it's also possible to dissolve the citric acid in water um, or even and that's another uh, another thing that you might want to try out you can actually also melt the citric acid over in a little flame so i'm going to show you all of these possibilities and then it's up to you to choose whatever works best uh, for you okay now let's uh, start uh, making uh, those uh, crystals here so what i've done here is i've uh, taken a few grains of uh, the citric acid uh, placed it directly on a microscope slide and I added a little bit of alcohol. Um, this is concentrated alcohol around 96%, I think. Um, yeah, also readily available. And the alcohol now dissolves the crystals. And the alcohol, because it's low surface tension, spreads across the slide as well. And it starts to evaporate. And under the microscope, we can actually see that those uh, clumps that you see here, these are the original citric acid crystals. Um, and they slowly start to dissolve now. And the alcohol starts to evaporate. And this gives it this kind of a, um, almost uh, cloud-like uh, patterns uh, that you can, uh, can see here. It's because of a difference of refractive index. Um, because of the evaporating alcohol. In any case, uh, the crystals, they start to become smaller. And the alcohol evaporates. And then when the alcohol is evaporated then the uh, citric acid starts to recrystallize is in the form of very thin layers um, on the microscope slide and what i've done here is i've now um, caught this uh, under the microscope and i've made a time lapse video here so um, th what you see here is 10 times faster than in in real life and i think it really looks beautiful as you can see that the, the as the citric acid starts to spread across the slide and starts to recrystallize you see all of those beautiful colors um, and uh, of course also a little bit of a look uh, is also necessary because sometimes if there are some tiny specks of dirt uh, on the microscope slide then this can actually serve as so-called a, a crystallization seed crystallization seeds are the starts of crystallization and from there new crystals start to form so 
if your slide is very clean, then you might actually get larger crystals. And if your slide is a little bit dirty or dusty, then you might have multiple crystals starting to form um, on different places on the slide at the same time, because each uh, speck of dust is uh, a crystallization seed to start a, a new crystal. So you see that um, in this case, uh, it might not always be the best idea to clean your slides uh, too much, but uh, it actually gives you a little bit of uh, possibility now to experiment around a little bit as well here. So that is uh, the first possibility. Second possibility is, is to, to dissolve the citric acid in water. Um, however, here I highly recommend that um, you um, kind of heat up the slide a little bit. Otherwise, it takes far too long for the water to evaporate. So what I've got here is I've got a hot plate. It's a so-called a coffee warmer um, and uh, it uh, goes uh, quite, uh, quite hot, uh, up to 80 degrees centigrade. And uh, that's hot enough for the water to evaporate in a few minutes. And uh, after the water has evaporated, you take off the slide, you allow it to cool down um, and then uh, the crystals will start forming. And if the crystals do not start to form sufficiently quickly, then what you might want to do is you might want to place a small um, crystal um, directly on this sticky surface that has formed because then uh, some of the citric acid crystals will break off and, and this will and then act again as a crystallization seed um, you know, for new crystals to form. Or you just add a, not too much water so that not the whole crystals actually dissolve uh, and then you have small pieces left over and then recrystallization will start from there. So again, many things uh, to experiment around with. So these were the two easiest ones, but if you want to go a little bit more fancy, uh, then you can also try to make crystals by melting the citric acid. I've also done that. You know, how do you do that? Um, I do not recommend candles uh, because they form a lot of soot. Um, you can use gas, a gas lighter and directly use it with a gas lighter. Or in my case, I've uh, um, bought myself uh, an alcohol uh, Bunsen burner, so to say. Um, and uh, this uh, allows me also to heat up uh, the citric acid and to actually melt it. Um, don't overdo it because as soon as it starts uh, caramelizing, if you make it too hot, uh, then it's also not going to work anymore. So it should not start smoking. So as soon as it melts, you might want to uh, immediately remove the slide again from the flame and uh, what you can do is you can place a small uh, cover glass on top of it and then the citric acid will melt beneath the cover glass um, and uh, then you get a very flat you may get very flat crystals here um, or um, the second possibility you take another slide and kind of spread apart the, the molten uh, citric acid and uh, this also yeah basically allows it to, to form a thicker layer and then you might also have multiple crystals forming at different places Again, there are so many variations to this. Uh, this is just basically a suggestion of what you might try, but the effects are really beautiful. Um, and what you do is, is you take now the, um, the slide with your crystals and you put um, one um, filter, um, one polarization filter on the bottom, then you have the slide and then you put another polarization filter on the top. And then what you have to do is you have to rotate one of those filters um, to get the best uh, color display. And ideally you probably would like to probably roll them into so-called a crossed polarization position so that the background comes uh, completely dark. Um, and uh, in the case of uh, so-called circular polarizing filters, um, like for example, some of those 3D glasses have those. You might even have to flip one of the filters um, around to the other side because uh, there is, now it's getting a little physical, there is a so-called a, a, a wave plate, a lambda fourth plate also included, which makes uh, it circular polarizing and then it is only on one side of the filters. Uh, I think this is getting a little too specific now. I think we're just going to forget about it. Just experiment around with it um, and flip some of the filters around as well. Um, and then you might also get different um, uh, different effects here. So how do you now have to set up your microscope? Well, you need uh, to place uh, one of the polarization filters uh, directly beneath the microscope slide or on top of the lamp. Um, this will polarize the light and the second filter goes on top of the slide um, like I've done over here. Um, I've added two spacer slides here so that the filter does not touch uh, the crystals. Um, so there is also a little bit of space between the objective and uh, the filter because I'm only using the low power magnification. So there's no danger of the objective actually touching the filter as well. Um, yeah, you do not need a lot of magnification because the crystals generally are quite large. Um, and then what you can do is you can simply, as I already said, you turn uh, the bottom filter, the one that's um, over the lamp, and uh, you can adjust it uh, to get the colors that you want. Now, of course, it's also possible to take uh, those uh, plastic filters and uh, cut them into shape and then insert them directly into the filter holder of your microscope. You can do that. Uh, it's uh, more convenient maybe. 
but there is a disadvantage and that is you cannot uh, turn the filter then you have to turn the filter that's uh, on the microscope slide and this actually might move the slide around so i think it's the easiest way if you simply place a filter yeah directly on, on, on top um, on top of the lamp but uh, yeah it's up to you of course now you can also of course uh, do the following i've also tried that uh, i've uh, added a little bit of solvent again like alcohol or water um, and when you do that then you can actually see the alcohol quickly spread over the slide and, and this starts uh, to dissolve uh, the crystals again so it's kind of a little bit of a reverse process here and then if you wait again it's going to start recrystallizing again and you can make all of these fancy um, you know, fancy pictures and videos and it's it's a lot of fun and uh, yeah i like doing it a lot because uh, it's uh, yeah, you get nice results and then you can make your own postcards maybe or your own pictures that you want to hang up on your wall. Uh, plenty of possibilities and it's, I have to say, it's almost foolproof. Yeah, it's so easy to do that it's actually, I don't know, yeah, uh, it, 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 there's almost nothing that you can do wrong here, right? Um, you, uh, maybe a little bit of patience uh, for you to wait for the solvent to evaporate, uh, but otherwise really easy to do. Um, and one of the easiest adaptations um, um, you know, for the microscope is simply to add a couple of these polarization filters here. And it also works for, for stereo microscopes. So you don't have to uh, have a compound microscope like I have. You can also use stereo microscopes. So there are really a lot of uh, uh, possibilities here. Um, you know what? Uh, I think it's enough uh, for today. Please do share your own experiences in the comments section um, and uh, maybe you can have also some advice and some tips. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, now it's up to you uh, to kind of uh, experiment around a little bit and uh, to enjoy the beauty of nature uh, Yeah, under the microscope. Happy microbe hunting everyone. See you around next time. Bye bye.